Hello students, this is Judge Derek Meineke from the 44th District Court. Uh, I want to talk with you today about a couple different uh, topics. Um, usually this is something that I do when I come to class, um, but we aren't having those classroom visits right now. So we're going to make the best of things and at least touch base about a couple different topics that will help you understand what we do here at the District Court. Now normally when I come visit students, we go through all of the different levels of the Michigan court system. And I'm going to share with your teachers a basic layout that includes what the Supreme Court does, what the Court of Appeals does, what the Circuit Court and the Probate Court does. But for this video, we're specifically going to focus on what a district court does. Now, the district court is the court that's closest to the community. All right. Now, imagine this. The Supreme Court, our highest court in our whole state, is located in Lansing. All right. The district court is designed to be the court that is closest to the community so that wherever you live in the state of Michigan, you have a court that's close to you. Now we deal with a lot of serious cases, but we also deal with cases that are not as serious, like a speeding ticket or a parking ticket. Can you imagine if you lived here in the Royal Oak or Berkeley area and you got a parking ticket and you'd have to go all the way to the Supreme Court in Lansing to deal with it? What a tremendous waste of time. Or if you lived in the Upper Peninsula, and you got a speeding ticket and had to go all the way down to the Supreme Court in Lansing, go over the Mackinac Bridge. I mean, that is just simply a, a complete waste of time and inconvenient. So instead, we have district courts. The legislature about 50 years ago created district courts. And the district courts are connected either to a community or a set of communities and, and, and try to be the, um, with the goal being to be very accessible to uh, members of that community. So for example, uh, the 36th District Court, that's Detroit. Uh, the 43rd District Court, that's uh, Hazel Park, Madison Heights, and Ferndale. The 44th District Court, we are we serve Berkeley and Royal Oak. Troy and Clawson, that's the 52-4 District Court. Uh, the 50th District Court is Pontiac. Uh, the 47th District Court is Farmington, Farmington Hills, and so on. Uh, there's actually about 100 District Courts and they're spread out all across the state of Michigan. Again, so that people in a community have a court that's close to them. So if you live in Royal Oak or Berkeley, guess what? We're close to you. We're located in the same parking lot as the farmer's market. We're right across the street from the Royal Oak Library. So wherever you live in Royal Oak or Berkeley, if you really had to, you could bike or walk here. And that's the goal. So let's talk about uh, the types of cases and the type of law that's handled here at the district court. So at a district court, we're going to handle criminal cases, and we're going to handle civil cases, okay? So we're going to handle basically criminal law and civil law. Now to help me uh, talk about the difference between criminal and civil law, I have my fantastic assistant, Jane Meineke. Jane, if you can come on over here for a minute. All right, Jane, let's first start off with criminal law. When I say criminal law, what do you think of? Think of someone breaking into someone's house, drinking and driving, and also murder. Okay, those are all definitely um, cases that would fall under criminal law, for sure. Uh, one of the ways that I like to describe criminal law is basically uh, it's uh, the law that handles when someone breaks the rules. Now, my guess is, since you live in my house, you know that there are rules in our house, right? Yes. Okay, and at your school there are rules, right? Yes. Okay, and my guess is, even when you go out for recess, there are rules, right? Yes. And if you go to a lunchroom, there's rules. Yes. And if you go to your grandma's house, there's rules. Yes. And if you play sports, there are rules. Yes. When I was in fifth grade, I always thought, my life is full of rules. Do you feel that way as a fifth grader? Yes. And I'm sure that many of you have felt the same way. Now, there were times when I was in fifth grade where I would think to myself, I can't wait till I get older and I'll make the rules. Have you ever felt that way, Jane? Yeah. All right. Um, and that's totally normal. But here's, here's a secret that I'm going to share with you and with all my students. When you grow up and become an adult, there are even more rules. But let's talk about why rules are important. Now, Jane, can you imagine living here in Royal Oak, uh, or if you lived in Berkeley, and they came up with a rule that says, you know what, if uh, your neighbor gets a new TV and you want it, you can just go take it. Would you want to live in a community like that anymore? No. Uh, or let's say they, that uh, Royal Oak or Berkeley, they change the rules and say, you know what, 
if you don't like someone, you can just walk up to them and push them down to the ground. Would you want to live in that community? No. Why wouldn't you want to live in a place like that? Because it wouldn't be a fun place to live in. Well, that's why rules are so important. Rules are important because they help us figure out how to get along. Think about all of those different crimes that you're familiar with and the fact that there are rules against those crimes. Now, it's important when you live in a community that we respect each other's property. I'm not gonna come take your stuff, you're not gonna take my stuff, okay? And that we respect each other's bodies. I'm not gonna come push you down, and you're not gonna push me down, right? And these rules are put in place to make sure that individuals respect one another in that way, and then we can all live together in a community. We live, work, play in a community together as neighbors. That's why rules are important, and that's what criminal law is all about making sure that people follow the rules. Now, civil law is different. Now, I'm sure, even though your dad is a judge, that maybe you've seen some of those judge TV shows? Yeah. Okay. Now, they are, it's television, okay? So it's not like the real thing, but it does help us understand civil cases. Um, now, Jane, when you've seen some of those, uh, like Judge Judy or something like that, usually there's two podiums and there's one person at a podium looking like angry, and another person who's at a podium and they're rolling their eyes, you know, what is it that once that one side is looking for from the other? They're saying, judge, I want that person, make that person give me what? What are they looking for? Money. Money. Money or property, okay? Civil cases, I'm sure you've probably heard the phrase, I'm suing you or a lawsuit. Yes. Okay, and I'm sure you students have as well. Well, that's a civil case. Civil cases are about money or property, okay? Now, um, I do want to make sure that everybody here understands that, that criminal and civil cases, it's important that the court handles both of those. For example, can you imagine, Jane, if we had a disagreement, let's say I, I, I wanted you to paint the fence, okay? And I told you that I'd pay you $500 to paint the fence. And I told you to paint the fence purple, all right? And you decided to paint the fence sea green, your favorite color. And you worked very hard at it and it looks really good. And you came back to me and said, uh, I would like to get paid and I don't pay you, all right? That probably would make you mad, right? Now, I would be mad because you didn't paint it purple. So we would have a disagreement, wouldn't we? Yes. Okay, and would that disagreement be about money? Yes. Okay, now, did you break the law? No. Did I break the law? No. Okay, but we have this disagreement and right now we can't figure it out ourselves, can we? All right, so it's important that a district court is there to help parties resolve those types of cases in a fair manner, okay? So a lot of people understand that criminal cases uh, are, are important and they, they understand how serious that is, but civil cases are important too. Can you imagine if Jane and I didn't have a place to go to resolve that and she would get mad because she didn't get her money and I would get mad because she wouldn't stop talking about the money and maybe one of us decides to break the rules. So instead, it's important that people have a place to go to have their disputes resolved, and that's what the court is there for. So I wanna make sure that everybody watching this understands the difference between criminal cases, someone breaking the rules, and civil cases, a dispute between parties about money or property that needs to be resolved in the court. All right, now, we've talked about criminal cases and civil cases. The next section we're gonna talk about is two different crime classes, felonies and misdemeanors.